It is time to take a look at Xubuntu and its X files. This is Xubuntu 11.04, just released. Running this in a virtual machine, VMware, with Windows 7 as the host. I used Xubuntu was it last year, maybe a year before, on a uh, computer that had a laptop just had 512 megabytes of RAM, and I must say it ran pretty good. So let's see what happens with this inside a virtual machine. All right, you have chosen to install the latest version of Xubuntu. This exciting piece of software is brought to you free of any fees. Blah blah blah. Okay, Ubuntu or Xubuntu is based on the XFCE. It is a lightweight distribution similar to, uh, let's see, LXDE. And as you can see here at the bottom, it is copying the files for installation. Alright, the web experience, Firefox and Thunderbird apparently are installed by default. If I recall, when I ran Xubuntu last year on my uh, laptop, that, it ran pretty zippy. The only thing I had, the issue, was a persistent problem with wireless. It would connect, fade in, fade out, and I finally gave up on it. But other than that, uh, it ran pretty good, pretty stable. But uh, that one did have an X file, and that X file was wireless, per se. Xubuntu is shipping Pigeon as default instant messenger. Has anybody tried this yet? Let me know. Okay, media. Whether your collection is small or large, G Music Browser is the default media player in Xubuntu. Uh, I believe I tried G Music Browser and it wasn't too bad. I forget which computer I had it in. But right now, uh, Banshee is looking pretty good because it plays both audio and video files and it appears to be uh, pretty stable. I'm running Banshee 1.8 something I believe and uh, 2.0 I think is in beta stage. Alright, Abbey Word is a word processor which can read almost all known document formats. Right. Uh, I'm currently using, uh, what am I using, LibreOffice in my uh, Linux Mint laptop. And it looks like LibreOffice is, is here to stay and OpenOffice might be on his way out. Just a rumor. Okay, Xubuntu Desktop, the application menu gives you complete access to all your applications, a launcher panel, and we'll be taking a look at this shortly. Know your desktop, the Ubuntu Software Center, and a thank you from Xubuntu. Alright, this is the beginning of the slideshow. While this is installing, let's go to the uh, Xubuntu website real quick here and see what we have. Make sure 
that's uh, it's downloading language packs. I think I'll just leave it. Um, let's see. Let's click Get Xubuntu. Minimum system requirements: you will need 200, 256 megabytes of RAM to run the live CD, or 256 megabytes RAM to install. The alternate installation CD requires only you have 64 megabytes of RAM to install. But uh, with 64 megabytes of RAM to install, you may be able to install it, but it's probably not going to run. So what's the point? You need at least 2 gigabytes of free space. And once installed, Xubuntu can run with starting from 256 or even just 192. But it is strongly recommended to have at least 512 megabytes of RAM. Well, it seems to me if they strongly recommend to have 512 megabytes of RAM to run it, you should have at least that much to install it. But that's just my opinion. Okay, these are just screenshots. So let's go back to the installer. It looks like it's about 75% done. How is uh, Unity working out for you guys? Do you like it? Hate it? Better than you thought? Worse than you thought? I've been uh, reading mixed reactions to Unity. I think it looks cool. Uh, I'm not ready to uh, to install it and run it yet, but uh, we'll we'll see. I'm ready. I'm waiting for uh, Zorin OS 5 to be released at the end of May this month course those of you who know my channel and for those of you who don't I recommend Zorin and Linux Mint as the two top choices for Windows migrations you know I just realized I I probably should have showed you the uh, installer from the beginning but I think one of the um, one of the options if you are uh, installing this next to your Windows operating system I believe one of the options is uh, to install it on the entire hard drive to erase what you have or to do something else and if if I recall, if that's true, if I am a Windows user brand new to Linux and I see something that says do something else, uh, that would not be very encouraging because when it says try something else or do something else, well, that something else could include, well, well, I don't want to do this anymore. But that's how I see it as a Windows user. If I were a new Linux user coming from Windows, but anyway. Oh, finished installing and I'll type in my password let's see what did I use Let's see, will this go full screen or will it crash? It looks like we're okay. All right. Okay, this is the default desktop for Xubuntu. It says here new drivers available. There are 29 updates available for this new operating system already. And let's see what it looks like starting, I guess, with the wallpaper. Um, it's different, isn't it, this wallpaper? Kind of looks like one big umbrella or one big parachute here. Well, let's start at the right. Let's click this. This is the power button, it would appear. My two working stations here. This is just a VM uh, player shortcut. The menu popping down here. Of course, the time and the date. Install drivers, which I will not do. Looks like my internet is up. Pigeon in Internet Messenger, volume controls, and something crashed here. That's why it turns red, but I won't worry about that now.
Looks like about 49 megabytes of updates if I chose to update, which is not too bad. Let's see. I can right click on here, but still no option to add, or maybe you can add applications or applets on this one. Ah, yes, you can. So since we're not using this with the default Unity desktop, this is uh, defaulting back, I guess, to the GNOME. You can add applets. Very nice. And uh, let's see, what came up at the bottom here? Ah, a little docky down here. Cool. Okay. Let's see, what would I want to add? Eh, let's try System Monitor, add that. Okay, we have the system monitor here, system load, memory, swap, so on and so forth. All right, looks good. Okay, applications menu. All right, looks like we have a single file menu system here. Let's see, web browser, mail, reader, settings, settings manager, accessories, anything out of the ordinary here. Alraj, global time. And pardon me, that's my phone. Okay, I had to pause to take a phone call, so let's get back to this. Okay, the start menu. Where were we? Settings, accessories, what is Oraj, Oraj Global Time? What is that? Global Time. Hmm, don't know what that is. Apparently, it's something about Global Time. Games, nothing special here. Graphics, looks like GIMP is installed by default. Internet, of course, Firefox and Pigeon are the usual default pieces of software. Multimedia, let's take a look at the G Music browser. This is something that we probably don't hear about very much here. Let's see. Guess here you can adjust the panes, the preview panes, or the menu panes for the artist and stuff. What's this? All right, get out of that. Show buttons. The bottom here. Picture size, cloud mode. Okay. All right. Well, let's get out of G Music Browser. It'll let me. Let's see. How do we get out of this? Font size. All right. Hit escape to get out of that. Getting back to the menu, the start button here. Office, Abbey Word, Dictionary, Araj Calendar. All right. That looks like a calendar, of course. System, additional drivers, gigolo, language, login, printing, startup, disk creator. This appears to have the usual stuff here. Let's check out the Ubuntu Software Center. Okay. We've seen this before. Very easy to use. Get software, installed software, history. And this little dock down here looks pretty cool. Let's see, we have trash. The home folder. Looks like it has auto hide feature. Music. Abbey Word, Ubuntu Software Center, Application Finder, Settings Manager. That's the terminal. Yes, it is. Nice contrast here with the black on white. All right, then the um, minimize all windows, restore windows, web browser, and mail. Let's uh, let's go to settings. All right, let's try changing the appearance. Let's see, Graybird. Okay, Graybird is the default setting. High contrast, don't like that. Another high contrast, 
don't like that. Let's try industrial. I guess industrial is okay. Kiwi, mist. Marina, aquash. Marina azul. Marina blue. Another Marina blue. Marina cappuccino, huh? Hmm. I think I need a cup of coffee. Marina cream. Marina fancy candy. Marina love gray. Marina galoosh. Neographic. Marina verde olive olive oil. <laughs> Marina gray. Marina light. Marina sky. Knox. And so on and so forth. With definitely lots of choices to change the appearance, let's stick with Knox. And that looks okay there. Let's right click on the desktop. Let's take a look at the desktop settings. And what kind of wallpaper do we have here? Okay, let's see. Eh, ugly, ugly, ugly. Okay, ugly, ugly, ugly. Turbulence. Hmm, interesting. Ugly, ugly. Eh, semi ugly. I shouldn't say that for that one. And the karmic and karmic. Let's take a look at turbulence. See what that looks like. Interesting. But still ugly. Let's go to the. Um, Let's try something else here. And let's try the karmic one. I kind of like the karmic wallpaper. I think I'll leave it at that. Right clicking again, you got some other options. The home folder icon by default, the file system, and the trash. And they're not opening up in the virtual machine. There they go. A little bit slow there, huh? Okay. Alright. Alright, default blue for the uh, folders. I like this nice grayish contrast here. I believe it's easy on the eyes. I like that you can add still add applets if you so choose to. And the auto hide dock at the bottom is a nice feature. So what do you think of Xubuntu? It looks cool. It appears to be fast. Uh, again, I'm running this in a virtual machine, so it's probably going to run faster on a full install. How does this compare to Windows 7? What do you think? Well, this may not be a fair comparison. Windows 7, at least my version here, is it uh, premium or professional? I forget. It's more of a full-featured operating system. So, I think, and there's my phone. Someone's messaging me. Oh, I got a text message from Microsoft. Stop doing those videos. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll look at the message later. Okay. Well, what do you think of this as it is, Xubuntu and its X files compared to Windows 7? Yeah, I think I'll still still stick with Windows 7, but it looks cool. I will say that. Okay. I think I'll leave it at that. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> I'm running a little slow tonight. Hmm, I don't know why. But okay. Thanks for watching this edition of Total OS today on Xubuntu and how it compares somewhat to Windows 7. And as always, I will catch you sometime in the future. Bye.